And up next, we have uh, Bang the Table. And Bang the Table provides an all-in-one community engagement platform that's designed to increase public participation, which allows organizations to deliver communications across various channels and formats. Their unified dashboard allows an organization to centralize key insights and sentiment analysis so that organizations can best gauge how they interact with their constituents. And today from Bang the Table, we have M Michelle Stevens, who's the, he the head of planning practice. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Let's get my slides up here. So thanks for having me. This has been a great conversation. It's so exciting to see all the smart city work being done out there. So I have been a city and regional planner for over 20 years. And in that time, I've worked on a wide variety of local, regional, and federal um, projects, as well as within those organizations. Throughout my career, I have focused on transforming the way government connects to its residents by identifying efficiencies and implementing innovative solutions. Bang the Table is one of those innovative solutions that helps you get more new and different people involved, make community-informed decisions, build trust with your communities, and save resources. So I've made a big promise. I've said, if you implement Bang the Table, you'll be able to hear from and involve more of your residents in the decisions that impact their lives while saving time and money, and also creating a trusted relationship with them. And it's true. Hey, Michelle. Because, yes? We're, we're not seeing your slides if you have I don't some. have any. Well, I do, but not yet. Am oh. I not entertaining enough? Michelle, you are crazy entertaining. And I love the promise that you just made me. So I will be eagerly awaiting your slides. I do appreciate the interruption. I often will start and be like, oh, halfway through, I forgot my slides, sorry. But today you were lucky enough that I only saved it for just a little bit. <laughs> Back to my big promise. Um, I've said that if you implement Bang the Table, you're gonna hear from more people. We're gonna save money, we're gonna save resources. And I say that as a former client. So I was a Bang the Table client before I joined. And as a city planner who's worked for over 20 years and spent a career focused on making great communities. Throughout the pandemic, we have all participated in the transition from primarily in-person conversations to our Zoom default. Government agencies at all levels have implemented new tools and new processes to address the challenges of conducting the business of government online. We're hearing from many of those today. But at Bang the Table, this was not a new approach. We have been leading the transition to a digital first engagement approach for over 14 years. We have over seven client or seven 700 clients on four continents with over 11 million participants and 12,000 practitioners who launch on average 100 projects each week. So let's take a look at a few of those projects and I will share my screen. Do let me know if this doesn't work. So let's start here. Our clients are engaging on a wide variety of projects, budget and capital improvement projects like this site from Denver where they're asking the community about ARP funds and the best way to, do, to, involve the, to involve or use those funds to support their community. Wolf re-engagement. Again, I'm in Colorado, but this is a, a spicy topic uh, that really impacts all of our communities, um, different agencies, as well as residents. Transportation and mobility conversations, the impact of COVID to our public transit, how to balance all of the needs Imagine, imagining, visioning, strategic planning, all use Engage in HQ or bang the table to facilitate the conversations that may have been happening in person, but are now happening online, but also to keep those conversations ongoing with their residents. Not only are we helping those individual departments or individual projects move forward, but we help communities with the tough conversations and the timely conversations. Those that are about race and policing and providing a variety of tools to allow different types of participants and different types of learners the opportunity to join the conversation, not just sending an email or showing up at City Hall. Conversations around mental health, in fact, all types of health conversations, sexual assault, but we're also having fun conversations, like this one from Denton, Texas, um, where they're having a pet photo contest to drive that participation to their engagement site in order to allow them to have some other conversations 
that are that maybe are helping to inform policy decisions, affordable housing, ADA transitions, comprehensive planning, pedestrian safety. This happens in every community around the world. These conversations need to occur in a way that are inclusive and diverse, but also result in outcomes that are informed by this participation. And we make that easy for you to do. Conversations sometimes engage in HQ is just a place for people to ask questions. When's the next thing going to happen? When is Hobby Lobby coming to town? Those things that can take up so much staff time by answering repetitive questions that could be easily shown on a website, but that they can also share with their broader network. Here, they're using this site specifically to talk about local economic development. So online shopping directories that are crowdsourced, rental assistance, ways to be, get involved and build community. We serve clients of all sizes and at all levels. Pagosa Springs here is less than 2,000 people. Again, for a variety of projects, everything from their land development code to development projects that are under review. In New York City, we're looking at specific neighborhood plans. We also support those mid-sized cities, state government, as well as federal governments around the world. And all of this is accomplished with great data and analytics that provide those insights to let you know that silent majority, as well as those who are aware and involved and the, the loud voices in the room. Let's take a look at an example. So we have a client in Santa Barbara, Jessica, city planner there, have been tasked with doing a, an online workshop. They're looking at how to fit all of the density that they need to fit in their community without impacting their neighborhoods. And so they used Engagement HQ to create this online workshop. Clear description of why they're engaging, ways to get involved. On the right-hand side, they're allowing their participants to say, hey, I wanna to continue to be involved. Keep me informed as we move through this process. FAQs that help everyone to have the same base information. So not only are we providing that opportunity for participants to get involved and to have those activities, but also an easy way to access background information, ongoing information. And when the project is closed, that information is still available for them. Project timelines help people understand where they are in the process so we don't get that anxiety of decisions are happening without me. Government tends to take a little while to make these decisions. So it's not uncommon to see projects that last well over a year. Having this central place where they can come back and see the work over time helps to build that trust and definitely increases transparency. But Jessica here um, was tasked with this project and she put out a series of, of tools to allow their participants, a mapping, a survey, storytelling, um, other ways polling for their participants to, or residents to, to share about what they would like to see for building sizes. And so on a Friday evening, Jessica launched a map and said, please tell us what building sizes would be appropriate for your neighborhood. And when she came in on Monday morning, she had 2,700 pins. And this is in a city that has about 90,000 residents. That's some terrific participation. And she panicked. She thought, oh my gosh, we have been spammed. We have been hacked. Something has gone wrong. And she made the phone call to, to, our, to our, her engagement manager who said, well, let's just take a look. They opened the dashboard and learned that almost all of the 2,700 pins were from a single participant. They knew him. It was Greg. We all have a squeaky wheel, and at least any of us who have worked in local government, we all have a Greg. And so Jessica reached out to Greg and said, what's going on? Why do we have all these pins? And Greg's concern was that he wouldn't be heard, that he was being ignored, and wouldn't have the opportunity to really share his ideas with the city, and that the city wouldn't hear them. By using Engagement HQ, Greg had the time to put 2,700 pins on the map, to clearly enunciate to the decision makers where his concerns were. It also provided Jessica the opportunity to reach out to him. And the dashboard and our participant manager made it easy for her, her to say, Greg, what's going on? Through their conversation, she understood and was empathetic to his concerns. And they reached a solution that, they, that the city would produce a second map and that Greg's map would sit in the back and would be um, used as a data set, but that perhaps 2,700 pins might be too much information for someone who is not as engaged as Greg. So Greg knows that he was heard, his data is included, but then the city quickly, by Monday afternoon, had version 2.0 of the map out and received another about 700 responses from other residents within the community. So 
kind of the win-win, right? How often in local government, especially in city planning, as a practitioner, do we get to say that between Friday afternoon and Monday morning, we've heard from a participant, given them time to place 2,700 thoughtful pins about where they think density or large different sized buildings should go, make them feel involved, collect their data in a way that was understandable, pivot and relaunch while continuing to involve the community with a single person spending less than a few hours to get that work done. It's pretty impressive. Let me wrap up with just a few details about Engagement HQ. So I started with talking about why it's important. Four main things. Let's get more people involved. We know that we have a tendency to hear from the same voices. We also know that if we invite more people to our party, that those loud voices are gonna be dimmed down a little bit. We're gonna make community informed decisions. Why? Well, because it's easy to access the data. Rather than having a collection of just emails or the survey report, we have different tools to understand and we can still pull those real-time insights. By using that feedback to make the decisions, to be able to point to that, hey, Greg, you said this, here's what we did, here's the next step in our process, our community feels listened to, and that's the first step to building trust. And finally, and the reason I purchased Engagement HQ was that efficient use of resources. Having everything in a single place, no matter what my project is, whether it is a master plan for parks and rec or an environmental review or a ask city council a question, all of that can occur in a single location. So not only do staff get that user experience, our public gets the user experience. They don't have to learn a new tool. They don't have to find a new website address. They go to that single location to get that information. Our tools support the International Association of Public Participation, or the IAP2. And for those of you who are new to community engagement, I encourage you to visit the IAP2, which is a nonprofit organization focused on the practice of public participation. And as we start to do that, we will elevate what this practice is. As a government practitioner, I spent most of my time on the left-hand side of the spectrum, telling people what we were doing. Maybe I'd step into that consult side and say, send me an email and, and we'll listen to it. I'm not gonna necessarily do anything with it, but we'll listen to it. With Engagement HQ and the other tools, it makes it easier to move onto that right-hand side at the appropriate points within your project. How do we listen and work with our community to solve the problems that are really challenging all of us? Our tool suite, these are our primary engagement tools, come in an unlimited way. You can use as many of these as often as you would like on as many projects or consultations or engagement activities as you would like. You can have your consultants use them. You can work with your neighborhoods to help use these tools. Keeping all of those conversations in that single place. Creative use of these tools, of course, discussion forums, surveys using as forms, places, is that map-based tool or map-based feedback we saw. But in addition to the tool set, we also take the privacy, security, and accessibility of your residents and stakeholders seriously. Engagement where we ask folks to give away their personal information, like out of a Facebook or next door, is not true engagement, that's not democracy. And we wanna make it a place where it's accessible, convenient, and inclusive. Of course, you wanna know who you're hearing from. So we have a participant relationship manager or PRM. This helps you understand who you're hearing from and more importantly, who's missing from the conversation. That way you can allocate resources to get those missing voices. Folks who maybe aren't going to be online, Folks who maybe are very distrustful of government, maybe going door to door, but that online tool is still that central repository where everyone can get access to and can also inform those in-person activities. Built-in newsletter tool makes it easy to reach back out to those participants. And then our reporting and analytics is where it becomes powerful. We can do all those kind of engagement activities, but if you don't have an easy way to understand and respond to your participants, then you're missing the most important step of engagement. Engagement not for engagement sake as compared to engagement to make decisions. And we need data and insights to make those decisions. So our reporting is user defined and on demand. You have access to compare project to project information, the use of tools, the way participants interact. And my favorite is our aware, informed, engaged metric that gives that voice to that silent majority. And we're using AI sentiment analysis to give you that quick snapshot of what people are saying, moving us away from the survey, which is a very transactional um, tool into something that allows people to maybe share their real thoughts and feelings is using that sentiment analysis. Of course, we're here to help. We provide a, a, not only thought leadership with webinars and eBooks and articles, but our help desk is available 24 hours a day, five days a week. We're providing multilingual moderation on this site. So we're always available at ensuring that the conversation stays on topic and um, appropriate. With that, 
I am going to pause and hand it back.